Hello, it's James here and it's 21 degrees outside. It's a lovely sunny summer's evening at 8.45 in Scotland. We're in Livingston at the moment. Uh, I was supposed to head off by now but I misplaced some stuff so I had to come back to get them. Uh, so I started off this journey at 23%. So I'm charging the car up at the moment and uh, I've got the AC and the heating on. I've got them on at max at the moment, uh, with the fan on max I mean. And also on the back, you'd see I've actually opened the porthole and I've got two fans, they're fairly strong. Uh, they're both USB and have a look. there's two settings, there's off, low and high. So we'll set them both at high and as you can see from the image they are hopefully cooling the car down. Hopefully we'll reach about 70% at that point. Since we started off at 22.3 degrees if we add 15 degrees centigrade to that that would be 37.3 so if we get anything below 37 say we get under 35 degrees then that's actually a good result so it means we could probably do some more tests later on with the porthole opened. If it goes above 38 degrees then I don't think it's going to make much difference with anything else but we can always still give it a go and stay at a charge. So we're going to see what happens with pull it, putting the AC on. Uh, let's see what we're pulling at the moment. So we're charging at 44 kilowatts at the moment so it's going at full pelt and the AC and the heating's on so that's going to draw some of the power away from the Chadimo. So we're going to find out if having those fans actually help. Your guess is as good as mine's. This isn't very scientific. If we get anything below 12 degrees after 30 minutes, then it's going to be a good result. And with the aircon and the blowers blowing into the vehicle, it should create like a little bit of a pressure inside the car and it should actually push all the air down into the uh, porthole. So it'll be interesting to see if it's going to make much difference. It is currently about 10 minutes and on leaf spy it's saying we're at 29.7 degrees. Right, so we managed from 23% up to 79 in 30 minutes. The temperature was 37.3 degrees, so that's a 15 degrees increase which is what we had on one of my previous drives so it doesn't seem like the fan is doing anything but me being me we'll keep those fans running down there down that porthole and we will see what happened when we get a little bit further down because I need another charge anyway so I think we we're only dropping about one one degrees one and a half degrees from this sort of temperature so we're gonna see if we can get this temperature down. I'm gonna to stick to 62 miles an hour if I can and just set it to ProPilot like I normally do. So for this part from Livingston to Edinburgh we, we should actually see some reduction in heat because we're actually going downhill so we're not actually using much power to go down to Edinburgh but the rest of the journey should be a little bit more up and down. Uh, we normally clock between 3.7 to 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour. We are currently at 4. So that should actually raise a little bit until we get past Edinburgh. So we're at Edinburgh now and we have clocked 12.2 miles so it's not that far of a distance. I'm going to slowly gradually use my throttle to get up to speed. Actually I want to talk about this screen here, the power band screen. So I'm basically throttling up to 62 miles an hour slowly. But what I'm doing is I'm keeping it within where it says eco there, so if we keep it below that, I find it actually keeps the temperature down of the vehicle. Sometimes you have to just push past that a little bit to accelerate up to speed. But now that we're up to speed, I'm going to set the ProPilot on to 62 
So you see that the car is actually quite aggressive at getting you up to speed and manually throttling yourself up there is a good way to keep the battery temperature down, I suppose. So that's just one of the techniques that I use. So I'm not really quite sure what to expect from this test apart from having extra noise, a couple more decibels coming from the open hatch and to see if it will cool the battery. I suppose the only thing I can really do at this point is report back on what the car is doing and I'll have to do a follow up towards the end of the video on maybe doing a comparison with what was happening when I went down to the fully charged live trip that big 376.1 mile trip that I did So I'm treating myself to a gourmet burger here so uh, I had to pull up to the next window to wait for my filly old fish so um, might as well talk about leaf spy so this will give us a chance to imitate like if I was stopping here for the five minute break that I normally do on uh, the, the previous trips that I've been doing uh, he said it's going to take two to three minutes so I'm not going to question him on that if we look at the battery temperature now it is at 37 37 degrees on the dot so that would mean that we have dropped in temperature by 0.4 of a degrees uh, I was expecting it to be stable like when we were in uh, England going on the flats and this part of the journey I'm sure it's not that flat here uh, let's have a look on the spy it's actually dropped to 36.9 now okay so there is a, a it is mostly downhill at this point so We'll, we'll give it that, so I'm not sure if these fans are actually doing that much at the moment but the temperature of the car is dropping and with the five minute rest that we're going to be doing it might actually help the car to be that little bit cooler so it has been roughly about two to three minutes for my gourmet filial fish from Macadesia. Uh, this is my dinner for this evening. I've not actually eaten since lunchtime. So I might as well feed myself while we charge the car up. I'm going to head down to the charge point now and get all set up. So I'm just going to go straight to charging and use that wait time because I actually turned the engine off. Is it the engine? The motor off on the, the leaf ah, right so they've put up some barriers here I wonder if they put those up for the trucks to stop them from the jumping in these bays possibly I don't know maybe they're fixing something right I am going to charge the car up now charge place Scotland I'm not sure if you can hear the fans of well, here are the two fans still spinning away. Right, so the car's charging. What I'm going to do now is turn the car on, put the fans on, put the AC and the heat not on. Basically, I am doing everything in my power to reduce the amount of heat that we're going to produce. To the highlighted route. I am charging, I cannot proceed anywhere. So, we're roughly about five minutes in from Macadese to here, and we are down to 36.8 degrees. That's a, that's a fairly big drop. So, I'm still not sure if the fans are doing the job or not, and your guess is as good as mine's. So, I'm just kind of winging it and making things up as I go along. Uh, so yeah, so we got the heating on and the AC on and the blower on high and that is actually AC and auxiliary is sucking 800 watts 
So that is actually drawing uh, a bit of power off. We st uh, we were at 47%. Uh, might as well do what we did last time, set the timer for 30 minutes. Timer. Oh yeah, I was too busy munching. We're pulling 31 kilowatts. Man, I'm terrible at this, aren't I? So this seems to be a very good comparison to when we were down at Weatherby last time. Temperature started off at 37 degrees centigrade. Previously it finished off charging at 42.6 degrees and today we have 43.1 and we also actually got more charge from here. So I'll put the figures up here somewhere. Right, so that's our time up. Right, lease by on, connected, connecting. So we actually cool down a little bit quicker this time. Is that because it's slightly warmer, the battery? Is it because the fans are blowing actually doing a little bit? It's something that you guys will have to decide if it's actually worth doing. But for now, I am going to get ready and I'm going to hit the road. Right, I'm back on the road again and I'm just going to leave those fans running because it's kind of set up for there anyway so might as well keep that going. Um, does it make a difference? Possibly? Do I actually know at this point? Not really. Your guess is as good as mine's. Some people might think it is working and if it is, is it really worth that much hassle and £30 worth of fans? Maybe not. I don't think I would do it again. I, I, I think the only way I'm going to do try this again is to buy a leaf blower and shove some proper air down those vents and uh, just to see what will happen if you blast proper jets of air down there. As for USB fans, I don't. I don't think it really makes that much of a difference, if any. So. This sort of stuff is quite hard to sort of like figure out how to test. So uh, it'll be really interesting to find out what you guys think uh, if it actually did anything or not. I suppose the bottom line is, uh, do you really want the hassle of opening up the maintenance hatch to do to cool the battery down by you know one uh, zero point one degrees centigrade? It's probably not really worth it. The car, the car, I mean, people say you need to babysit this car, and yes you do, but it's very predictable, the battery's predictable. I know exactly what it's going to do, or you know, roughly what it's going to pull in charging speeds, and how much heat it's roughly producing. But, have you, actually, if you want to find more about batteries and actual, have a proper scientist, someone that actually knows what they're talking about, you need to uh, see Ewan Matuk's channel. He's like a doctor of batteries and um, he's got a few videos at the moment on YouTube and they are absolutely brilliant. He's got like graphs and stuff and charts and he actually uh, and he uses like a visual aid to uh, talk about the battery because I read stuff about the battery online and there's like most of the stuff goes over my head but with uh, Ewan's videos, it's really informative. So even if you're not into uh, batteries as such, it's actually a good thing to know about if you drive an EV. So definitely go and watch his channel and like and subscribe it because, you know, for me, I've actually learned quite a lot from uh, the, the the young man. Don't let don't let his young rugged looks um, make you think that he does not know what he's talking about. He does have a PhD or a doctor or a, a master of arts or something like that. It's got some some big degree thing, but he is a doctor. So Dr. Yoon Matuk, uh, his channel uh, plug plug life. That's it. That's it. So plug life, Yoon Matuk. Go and watch him now. Don't watch this because th this this test is a load of rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, what? Watch him after, after, after this one. I'm finding myself a wee bit shouty today doing this video, and I think it's because that hatch is opened, and I can actually 
hear the whirling that bit louder. So there must be some sort of access to the outside world from there. So those fans must be doing something. So maybe we should actually do a test with uh, bigger fans or, or, or something. I have to think of uh, what, what we need to do. So speaking of new channels, there's another EV channel. It's uh, James from ENV 200 Adventures. So there's a lot of James that drives EVs. We have James from James and Kate, and we have uh, James Cook and his Tesla and his little one. Oh yeah, and we have James from Electrify Journey Japan, and then you have me. There's just far too many James, isn't there, that drives EVs. So from this day forth, we'll call him Richard from ENV 200 Adventures. It's, uh, it's the most fun you're going to have watching a man in a white van. <laughs> so a quick synopsis of what his show is about. He just drives his van uh, with his family and talks about the adventures that they have on it. It's just good entertainment and uh, it's definitely one to watch. So I'll, I'll stick a little um, information sticky note video link thing above in this little eye in the circle and also in the description below. So yeah, so just head over to his channel and uh, have a watch and I'm sure you'll hit the like and subscribe button because it's very entertaining. So I want to talk about the eco band again and why it's so important to try and keep it within that to help the motors to stay cool. I'm currently just tapping on the Res Plus to increase my speed gradually on this uh, single lane on the A1. We're at uh, 48 now, so if I keep on tapping it, you will see that it will, um, the engine will work that much harder to get you up to speed as soon as possible. The leaf has a tendency to be a little bit nippy when it's trying to get you up to speed. So doing light, light taps, you'd see that the band will go up ever so slightly. We're going uphill at the moment also, so it's not always at that point. It's more like here now. Uh, now we're going uphill, you'll see it climbing. So we get to 52. There's a truck behind me, so I'll need to try and get to 56 in a minute. Um, even with me tapping, I'm actually pulling away from the van or the lorry behind me. Sorry. And if we look on lease by, the temperature is pretty much where it was when we left. We're at 53%. So this would be the sort of point where we charge. So I've not actually gained really any extra heat but we have been going up and down hills and if you look back on the video where I fast forward you see that I've always been keeping it within that eco band or the cyan eco band as I call it so whenever I talk about the eco band that is what I am talking about no, I don't think many people use this screen for driving but to get the equivalent cost of energy you would be talking about on the little dial here two bars so two bars equals uh, just under the eco band of the cyan eco band i think i will call it at night now uh, it's late i don't think i'll stop for another charge there's not much point doing much more tests i'm still not quite sure about those little fans uh, like i said if you guys think of anything else or what you or any comments on this silly test um, put it on the comments below and I'd like to say thank you for watching and if you like the video hit the like and subscribe button and I will see you guys next time